to introduce myself. I'm Shashidhar and I'm part of Citrix Ready team. Uh, I lead the mobility ecosystem. Uh, today we have uh, Brian Filler, VP of Corporate uh, uh, Development, Lua, and Kelly McKinney, Lead System Engineer, Citrix UK, uh, along with us who will be presenting uh, this webinar. So first of all, thank you all for attending the webinar today. And I would like to welcome you all to this Citrix Ready Technical Webinar Series where we showcase how Citrix and our partners have integrated to deliver valuable products and solutions to the common problems faced by our customers today. So uh, today we will talk a little bit about productivity and security with enterprise messaging using the Lua solutions. Next slide, please. So to give you an overview of Citrix Ready program, so Citrix Ready is an end-to-end -end technology partner program that showcases and recommends third-party products, solutions, and services that demonstrate comp compatibility with the Citrix products. So customers, it, it becomes very easy for the customers wherein they can quickly find solutions recommended by Citrix Ready uh, in the Citrix Ready marketplace by navigating to www.citrixready.citrix.com. For, for more information, uh, please visit our Citrix Ready website. Uh, you can navigate it to the uh, web www.citrix.com slash partner programs slash citrixready.html. So before we start the presentation today, if you have any questions during the webinar, please use the question panel on the right hand side and we will take your questions in the Q&A session at the end. So without any further delay, I would like to welcome Brian. Brian, it's all yours now. Thanks, Sashi. Uh, appreciate that. And as always, uh, a hearty welcome to everyone out there. As Sashi said, wherever you are dialing in from, we appreciate you taking your time out of your, your morning, afternoon, or evening uh, to learn a little bit about Lua and how we work with Citrix. Um, I think you'll find the, the information that we dive into here um, fairly relevant, especially for the, the modern workforce and the, the modern enterprise of today, uh, trans, trans all verticals. Um, but we thought we would just uh, start a little bit, let you know who we are and where we came from, and then talk a little bit about the space in general, and then go more in depth into uh, actually what Lua's focus is and how we have a, uh, a real tangible joint value proposition with Lua, or with, with, uh, with Citrix. So as, uh, as Sashi said, without further ado, let's, let's get right to it. So Lua itself is a, is a company that's been around since 2010, uh, but realistically we've been commercially viable and in the enterprise for about, about 18 months. And the, the reason why we spent that much time preparing the product and the, and the solution is because we were building this for the enterprise from, from the ground up. And that's a very different methodology and a very different scenario than if you are taking a legacy uh, desktop app and trying to pivot it out into a mobile version of that experience or taking some sort of social application that's more consumer based and trying to turn it into an enterprise ready um, product. So it, it takes time to do that and there's a lot of ins and outs that and a lot of factors that need to be taken into consideration because just by definition a, the world of mobility and how a user in the enterprise works and the things that they need and look at is very different than, than a desktop user. So to that end, we are essentially taking that social behavior that we have all adopted en masse over the last you know, five, six, seven years, and certainly accelerating over the last few, if you're anything like me, of texting and messaging and utilizing that as a new tier of communication. So we used to have phones and faxes, and then we obviously had email, and then that became the backbone of, of our communication for you know better part of a decade and a half. But now we've segued into something else, and it's high priority, short form communication, um, knowing that if I send this to someone, they're likely to see it. And why wouldn't I not want to capture that, that behavior and that highly productive sphere and move it into the enterprise. So I can utilize that as a, as a productivity tool for my end users and the people that work for me. And, and that's really you know, what Lua is all about. So uh, I, I, hopefully you will, we will find that as we go through this, it's, it's obviously not an interactive webinar, but at the end we are going to be taking questions and answers. So feel 
please feel free on the right side to go ahead at any point and submit questions you may have about the solution, about how we work with Citrix, about the space in general. We're happy to you know, address any of those, uh, at the, but we are going to do it obviously at the end of the webinar. We're not going to kill you with too many slides. We're going to try to just move through this fairly quickly and get to the points that I think you all logged on to hear about. Um, so hopefully you'll find that, find that valuable. So if you look at if you look at these stats, and it's an interesting space because the world of mobility is exploding so quickly. Um, there are every day there's a new kind of uh, gasp-inducing statistic that's coming out about the use of mobile phones, the use of smartphones, the use of applications on those phones, whether they're consumer or professional. But also the stats that talk about the challenges that this is from a C-level executive at an organization really of any shape or size. And this is whether you're in healthcare or retail or state and local government, federal, uh, really across the gamut. And this stat <clears throat> I thought was interesting because it says 77% of C-level executives are obviously you know, struggling with the, this balance, you know, uh, the, the balance beam between offering the mobility to my end user and what that offers to them as far as efficiencies and and productivity, but also the requirements of the business from a security perspective. And I guess I, I, that's a high number, but I, 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 my guess is I, I don't know many of the other 33% that aren't sort of balancing this as well and, and challenged with it. I, my guess is this is really about 99 to 100% of C-level executives are, are identifying how is mobility in this, you know, the, the advent of this new world order going to affect my business and how am I going to take advantage of it. So I think one of the keys, and I think this is, if nothing else, this is probably one of the biggest takeaways, is that mobility is not about the device. And I think that in many ways, if you look at the history of the last, say, six to eight years of some of the technologies that have come out to try to secure and try to, you know, uh, protect these devices that we're using, and whether these are iPhones or Androids or Windows Mobile or even Blackberries, the the end game is not about the device itself. It is about the user. It is all about that end point and that last mile is the physical person. And how as a as an individual can I utilize this technology and instead of just having it locked down, how do I take it to that next level and make it a productivity piece for me and not just about securing what's my personal information or my personal data versus the other side of the house, which of course is the, the professional side. And the enterprise Enterprise has its own concerns as far as the security and auditability and litigious nature, but how do I how do I design something that's going to be utilized um, and adopted by my employees? Because I don't want to. The last thing anybody wants to rule out is technology that doesn't get adopted. There is a an elephant graveyard, as I like to say, of great technologies that got rolled out and went absolutely nowhere because it was not adopted by the end users. So. That fundamentally goes back to that original point as to why we took so long to build out our solution. It's because we wanted to look at that UX and that UI and the user's requirements. User looking back towards the data center, not the data center back, you know, looking downstream to the user. Because that's the human, that's the social being that goes through with their day from when they wake up to when they go to sleep. And how am I utilizing this solution or building it and designing and architecting it in a way that's going to make them more productive because at the end of the day that's obviously the key. Now all that said there has been this evolution of applications that have lived on the devices and since the enterprise wasn't offering something that was as productive as things like iMessage or Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp uh, or just traditional cell text we started utilizing these things for work and that that line between professional and personal started to blur and it blurred very very quickly and obviously this is why there's a whole new um, marketscape that is referred to as, as enterprise mobility management and this has become really an evolution just like it always is in technology it's somewhat geological and there's layers to it so if you go back to the mid 2000s you started to see as the as the advent and the adoption of these devices got more popular we saw MDM solutions come out and they were very focused on securing that device and ensuring that things that didn't want to leak out whether it was data or the device itself or what kind of 
wireless networks they could jump on. All these things could be secured and, and curtailed and, and denoted and designated by the IT department. And keep in mind, this, this is the IT department said for the better part of 15, 20 years had almost total control um, on these exact factors. So they can control what printers a user can go to, what applications they can go to, if they can print from a specific application. Can they print from that application if they're at home? No, but if they're in the office, yes. So there was tremendous amounts of user rights and all kinds of features and functionality that limited the exposure for the enterprise as far as data integrity and data security. Well, now that we're adventing all this, the mobility side of things, the users were basically going out on their own and, and doing this their own way because as, as we always say, water finds cracks. So they were going to find a way to be more productive. That next level, of course, became MI, or MAM, which was less focused on the entire device, securing the device, and more on specific applications upon that device. All of this is now flowing into and underneath an umbrella that is known as enterprise mobility management, or since we love our acronyms in the tech world, I cannot get enough of them, it's EMM. And this piece is going to really focus as much on productivity and putting these devices to use for us and less about just locking them down. That has become more of a commoditized size, or side of it. And now we want to look at what can they do for me and for my end user. So EMM, I mean, this is a, looks like a Wikipedia-like definition, but at a high level, enterprise mobility management is not, as I had said earlier, it's not just about technology. In this case, it's about the people, it's about the processes that you're going to bake between those people and the third part, which of course is the technology. And, and how am I going to approach this? Because this is, a, this is an emerging discipline, and there are, you know, many layers to it it can be very complicated and if you're not as an enterprise getting out of at, at getting out in front of this by now then you're probably already behind you know, behind the times and you need to really take a look at that take a look at having a somewhat all-encompassing approach to how you're going to secure and enable not just secure and I think that enable part is the most important piece because these devices are out there so when you look at EMM it is really inclusive of all these things we talked about so it's MDM it's MAM, it's MIM, and it's about 16 other debt acronyms as we build this thing out and it grows that I'm not going to bore you with today. But it's really important and it's becoming increasingly more critical to determine how the business processes are going to align to this mobile IT world inside their corporate structure. How are they going to support it? How are they going to enable it? Not just secure it. How are they going to support it and enable it? Because that's what the end user are crying out, the end users are crying out for. There is a reason why. 80 to 90% of the time you pick up your device, whether it's a BYOD or, a, or your personal phone, you are now utilizing it in some sort of way for messaging outside of email. And it's because, like I said earlier, this is a, a new layer of communicating that we all have adopted because it's incredibly useful, it's incredibly efficient. So how am I going to do that? How am I going to get productive with this, with this element of EMM? And if it's it's a BYOD scenario, and, I, and I'm a mobile user. I have what we have boiled down to be essentially four inalienable rights of a mobile user to be productive. This is from my career as a, as a sales guy on the road doing Montvale to Vineland in the state of New Jersey in the same day and being a road warrior and trying to be productive, there's really four elements, four tires to that car, if you will, that I need. And that for sure, that's email. Email is the backbone of communication. That's not going to change anytime soon. I need my calendar. I need to know what my appointments are. What's my next element that I've got on my day? That third part is my file sharing. I have to share files all day long. And so for to that end, something like Citrix Share File is such a huge part of my day. How do I move that data back and forth quickly from a mobile device? And that fourth piece, the piece that to date has been ignored by, you know, by the enterprise as far as a mobile first use of it, is messaging. I don't want my employees messaging on iMessage business conversations. I don't want them using WhatsApp for this, these types of these types of strategic scenarios. And yet it happens every day and you know, twice on Sunday. But these are the four pieces when you bake it all off that are probably the most critical to be productive as a, as a mobile user in today's enterprise. So a friend of mine, Chris Fleck, who basically runs the mobility solutions at Citrix, I, I, I love this quote he gave us, and he was talking about how 
combining the power of, of Zen Mobile and what it offers the enterprise along, along with us, it just injects that productivity layer from a mobile side. And, and he's really right. And if you don't know Chris, he's got some great blogs. I would urge everybody out there to just type in, you know, go to Google and bang out Chris Fleck Citrix blog. He's got some great articles, and it's always a fun read. They're not too uh, not too heavy. He's a funny writer. But he talks about how this is happening now. So as I mentioned earlier, if you're not getting ahead of this, you're already behind. So start thinking about what are my use cases. Every employee uses this messaging solution. So how, or of some shape or variety, whether it's consumer or not, how are they using it and why can't I take that and put it to use for me in my business? Because other businesses are doing that as we speak. So now we come to the fun part. Now we get to talk a little bit more about how Lua and Citrix have this uh, have, have sort of met in the middle here in the field of battle and um, and have engaged and had just a tremendous relationship as since we kicked this off late last year. So as I start to, start to build this slide out rather quickly, I'm also going to reintroduce um, Caleb and Kenny from Citrix, who is uh, a lead systems engineer who recently actually moved back to the UK and we're really pleased that she could take some time out of her day um, to jump on this call with us. So just, just to confirm, Kayla, are you still there? Yep, absolutely. Awesome. Thanks again. Thanks again for dialing in. Um, I realize it's, uh, it's probably already pub time out in the UK, so we'll, we'll move through this. And I, again, I appreciate you uh, talking a little bit more about from the Citrix side about what Lua offers as far as a joint value proposition to, to the end users in the field. So. At the end of the day, obviously Citrix has their works environment, and it's a critical EMM environment for anybody um, in the enterprise. And it's a it's a market leader for a reason because it's it's obviously managing um, the identity and the use of applications and securing the data where you are and what you're going to attach to and what you can do with that data and what you can't do with that data. And not so coincidentally, you're going to look at those core productivity apps that are baked within Works. Uh, that ironically they map directly to what we had seen as, as far as our value prop with Lua, which is if I want to be a mobile, productive mobile user, I need my email, I need the files, I need my calendar. And so that's why Lua has gone through the integration with Citrix to be Citrix Ready certified, which is again, a, it's a great experience working with the Citrix Ready team, as it always is, and having that ability to have Lua live inside of the works um, productivity apps. So as we, as we look at how that plays out, um, I want to now basically hand the mic off over to to Kaylee and, and ask Kaylee what was it about Lua when we first uh, met you, I remember it was back last January I believe uh, at Citrix Summit and we started talking about our field experiences, you guys on the Zen Mobile side and us from, from the Lua side and, and maybe give us a little bit of uh, background as to what you saw when you first started uh, reviewing Lua and what it could offer. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so again, this is Kaylee McKinney with Citrix. Um, I've been working with customers in the field for about three years and have had a lot of strategic conversations around mobility strategies with customers and what Citrix could bring to the table. Um, and just like Brian mentioned, a lot of it were those core components, right? Well, we need email, we need calendar, we need contacts and such. And Citrix was really focused on kind of bringing that enterprise-like experience to the mobile side as well. Um, but what a large piece that was missing in that, right, was this messaging capability. So customers would come back and say, okay, well, that's great to have kind of this desktop-like experience and these core components on a phone, but what about leveraging really the key communication aspect on a phone? And that came back to kind of mobile messaging and being able to shoot off quick notes to other people, I mean, especially in healthcare, right? So had strategic conversations around um, this partnership with somebody who could deliver that kind of mobile secure messaging so customers could start to actually leverage those friend user devices. And instantly, when I heard of Lua, um, could easily bring that to customers and start to position that in line with Citrix, right? That containerization and secure security piece that Citrix can provide while being completely coupled and integrated with a messaging solution like Lua. So I remember one of the first conversations we had um, when we got we all got back from Summit and we started talking about the use cases. We, we saw it since it's, it's really a layer of productivity. It's not just security. I mean, of course, it is secure, but it's that layer of productivity. Uh, what do you see as far as any use cases specifically? I know we've engaged in predominantly in healthcare and in and, and in a couple other verticals, and it certainly seems like this the concept of being able to use messaging 
as a productivity tool transcends all of them. But can you speak to, you know, maybe it's healthcare, maybe it's something else, but could you speak to one in particular that you saw that, that jumped out at you as far as the, those conversations you were having with the end users? Yeah, absolutely. And I think you bring up a good point, right? So there's, there's two pieces. From the productivity side, that's all the users. Um, and I've worked with several hospitals actually in conjunction with Lua as well. And one of the big things that they were seeing and that their doctors were really driving was, hey, well, I've got my phone in my pocket all day. If I need a consultation or if I need to reach out and speak to another doctor, the easiest and most quickest way for me to do that is to pick up my phone and shoot off a quick message. And on the flip side, right, also talking with IT departments, that was kind of an IT security nightmare. Um, but from a productivity perspective, the doctors were kind of doing it anyway. Right, because that's going to be the quickest way for them to get their job done. That's going to be the best thing for patient care. So that's the kind of tool that they were using to do that. Um, and so kind of in bringing those conversations to the IT team and starting to realize that we really shouldn't be decoupling the productivity that a user can have on their phone by forcing all of these, these security restrictions down on them. So absolutely, that was one. Um, and I've certainly talked to other industries as well. I know legal is a big one um, because they deal with a lot of like, the compliance information and whatnot um, and having issues kind of with lawyers texting back and forth because they didn't have a platform to do that more securely. Again, the people who are on the road, the people who have their phones in their pockets all day long and might not be sitting in front of a computer, um, that productivity of just being able to shoot out a quick message to someone else is absolutely the use case that, and conversations that we've had with a lot of our customers. Yeah, it's a great point. I think what gets lost sometimes, simply because even on the IT side and the, and the business owners, they're so focused on just trying to get you know, to the next level of an application or get to that next level as, as a company, they start to forget that all these conversations that are going on, it, it, if they're business conversations, they need to be uh, loggable and auditable and reportable, and they need to be secure. Even if it's something as mundane as a sales team, I and mean, we have clients that use, I mean, Citrix itself utilizes Lua, obviously, and, and sales teams that they discuss a discount or they talk about a client. If that's happening on text and, and message and, and WhatsApp, which, trust me, I was guilty of that years ago, that that breaks the data compliance policy right off the bat. Now, it further creates an issue when it uh, when you're talking about a public company or if you're talking about somebody that is in a, in a very regulated industry, like you said, referring to healthcare and and financial services, of course. So these, this is not, this is not a small problem. I will, I always think back to when we were at Hims earlier this year, and we were talking to a, a CTO out in the Pacific Northwest, and his comment was when we went through, he's, he was actively searching for something like this and didn't even know we were, we were around. His comment to us was, this scenario is basically flipping over Pandora's box because. Companies of every shape and size, of every variety, of all verticals are utilize, are doing this on personal text and on, on you know, these social applications, and it needs to stop. They need to get their arms around this now, and the longer you wait, that doesn't make the problem go away. You know, this is this is a problem that's, that's here now, and the fact that you inject such a huge amount of productivity and operational efficiencies and change into it is not a secondary piece. That's actually the primary reason to do it. So yeah, again, um, Kaylee, thank you so much. I hope you can, if you if you have the time, if you can hang on, we're 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 coming not too far from the end here, and if you can hang on, maybe for some of the Q and A, if they get directed back towards towards you, I'd love to have you on. But uh, I understand you guys are busy over there in the UK, so uh, you need to jump off. No worries. No, absolutely, I'll remain on the line. Super. Thanks again. So that is really in a, in a nutshell where we see Lua utilized with with Citrix, and obviously. In a scenario that we have, we are um, a product that works within Zenmo or within the work suite or outside of the work suite. And bear with me as I'm trying to move to the next slide here. Okay, so I thought I'd hit you guys and make sure you're awake by dropping our, our sort of drive, Burger King drive-through commercial there with the fun little bouncy bubbles. Um, 
but it is that does fundamentally strike right at, at what we're doing. And I think, as I mentioned earlier, some of the analysts are really getting their game on as far as enterprise messaging and how it's uh, going to be this critical piece of an EMM strategy. And 451 Group seems to be one of the ones that's out in front of this space rather quickly. And they had mentioned, this was a quote that they had dropped just a couple of weeks ago, which I think, I mean, I get it, and I think everybody gets it that's ever used a smartphone. Messaging is basically the top mobile productivity app for employees. Yet, if you're going to ask how many CTOs or CEOs uh, have it being utilized end-to-end -end in their organization, it's probably not the predominant amount of arms that are going to be raised. And that is kind of, uh, kind of indicative, and anytime you have a transformational technology, but it also turns very quickly, which is why, as I mentioned earlier, the partners we work with uh, in the field are, are channel resellers who are out in front and doing mobile assessments and helping people with their Citrix deployments of design and architecture in how to integrate a, um, a Lua deployment with that. It's a, it's a fascinating process, and it's something that any enterprise needs to be looking at. Also, earlier on, I had talked about if it's not something that is going to be adopted by the users, then it ends up just being a gigantic waste of time and a, a huge waste of money. And again, there is a litany of those solutions that have been out there. Every enterprise has had those decisions. You get very excited about a product or about something that that product could offer you downstream, and then after you roll it out and deploy it, the next thing you know, it's collecting dust. Nobody uses it, and it becomes the joke around the water cooler about a year later when somebody brings it up. So at the end of the day, there's a, two things that, that have to be baked into a solution, and, and this is the way we go to market. We use this phrase. We say it's, it's got to be consumer simple but enterprise secure. So that consumer-like look and feel, how snappy it is, how quick it is, uh, its receptiveness, how easy it is on the eyes to utilize it. I, the fact that I don't have to go six clicks down to do something, I'm one or two clicks as far away as I need to be from something that I want to do, that's key. Because if you're going to create workflow, you're going to inject yourself rather into your company's workflow. If it slows it down, it's not workflow, right? It's work stoppage, and we've that's not what we're attempting to do. So by having a mobile first user experience, if you remember we talked about we are a mobile first company, which means we built this from the user's um, expectations, needs, and requirements back to the data center, not the data center down to the end user. And by doing that, it allowed us to offer employees of the enterprise a different kind of an experience. And although the look and feel, again, may look like something that you've seen in your personal life, that's on purpose because it's something you're used to. When I started at Lua, it took me about two minutes to understand the, the product, um, probably 90% of the solution. And I could send a message within the first five seconds because I've, at some point in my life, sent messages on an application in my personal life. And that's the key. If you give them something that's going to be naturally adopted and it's, it's ease of use, um, then they're going to use it. And once they start using it, then everybody starts using it. And when you get by that is a community of communities. And then what you have after that is a highly productive workforce in whatever use case you originally started. So we talk about it being enterprise um, class, and enterprise grade, and not just a, a consumer app. And there's a lot of things fundamentally that are baked into there, obviously, from the security side. and. The ability to have an enterprise directory and the ability to tie back to after directory and the ability to um, utilize features and functionalities like the Citrix work suite and work inside of that. But there's also enterprise ready features that if you really want to go broad across uh, larger firms, you need to have these. And then that's the ability to have deep search functionality and look for conversations, look for documents. You need to be able to say I'm offline and I am do not disturb. You need to be able to have group calling and individual calling. So in the Lua application, if I press the avatar of someone's face, if I want to reach out to Bobby or Michael or Eli or Ryan, I can just press it and boom, the next thing you know, we're on a direct call. Or if I need an ad hoc group call and I need three salespeople or two engineers and, a, and our CEO, I simply press the avatars and hit the button and the next thing you know, we're on a quick ad hoc conference call. This is as efficient as a, as a message is, as a text message, but you know, baked obviously within Lua. And the ability to have all of that and have it logged and auditable is a huge boon for the enterprise. Be able to see that someone re read a message I sent. That seems so obvious, and yet it is to this day uh, the bane of the existence of email and text messaging because those things can be turned off. 
So to add another layer of productivity is that accountability piece, to know that someone's seen the message I sent or shared, they've seen the file that I share. So I need to be able to attach those documents. So I can attach anything into Lua, and I, whether it's a rich attachment, traditional document, video and audio, I can move them around. I can one click pull something down from share file and share it with somebody. So these are the pieces, again, that, that are basically the meat and potatoes of what productivity into a workflow is. If I don't have these, then I have to go find them somewhere else. As soon as I have to go to another technology to pull these things out and I can't just grab it right off of my mobile device, then I'm now stepping out of workflow and I'm becoming, it's becoming a pain. And that's exactly the wrong thing as you design and architect mobile solutions. The last piece is something that nobody else does, and it's not something you can get out of traditional email, and that's something we refer to as insights. And basically, it's the high level, uh, and sometimes a little bit more granular, but a high level view of the message use. So I can see the message volume, I can see the read rate. And why read rate may not seem important, you may be surprised to learn that, maybe I should say you're not surprised to learn that traditional email at this point, the read, the open rate and the read rate is less than 60% because there's just so much email that comes in. But I, how do I find the stuff that actually matters? And obviously that's where you know, Lewis steps in. But our read rate across our clients in the history of the company, and this is, you know, you're talking about in the, in the tens of thousands of users, is 96%. 96% of Lua messages are read. You cannot get that out of email. And it's not a, it's not a, it's not email's fault, it's just what that's evolved into over the last 15 years. So the ability to see that, I can see heat maps, I can see um, communication circles and wheels to see who's communicating with who, and I don't mean individuals, I mean divisions or groups. So when you ask a, a business leader or a business owner or a CEO, what is the most, one of the most important things that they would like to see their, their company do almost every time, they say communicate better. Be open, communicate, don't keep things in a box, don't keep things in a hive. And this allows them to see, uh, other than third-party hearsay or just water cooler guessing, hey, are, is that division speaking well with operations? Does that division speak well with sales or vice versa? Here you actually get a sense of it. You can see that, yeah, you know what, they're communicating on a pretty, pretty high rate and it's a healthy rate and that's something that's really important. So with all the talks about big data and all the information that you can pull out of there and the value you can get, and it's absolutely true, here's something that you can see short-term very t t tactical, but also can be strategic as far as what you do with it downstream. And this is the fun slide for me. So when you talk about uh, EMM and you want to talk about who's using something like enterprise messaging, in this case Lua, Kaylee and I both mentioned that it's not vertical specific. And that's because this is a behavior that is not vertical specific. So from finance to healthcare to education to state and local government to transportation and logistics to sports teams to um, web properties to giant vendors. Everybody is used a lot, utilizing something like this in their personal life and now if you look at a snapshot here on the screen, they're using it in their professional life. And it, although each one of these use cases when you see these logos and that's everybody from a Spotify to large healthcare to service companies um, to events, businesses, to the U.S. Army, they all have a different specific use case as far as the terminology they would use and the definition. But when you take a step back and you, you know, jump in a helicopter and fly up 10,000 feet and look down at it, it's all the same piece, which is they need quick communication that's accountable, reportable, uh, and trustworthy. And they want to be able to add that layer to their organization. And all of this is obviously just a subset of our clients, but they've all done this. And to a, to a company, they've all seen dramatic increase in that productivity. And that's not something that is in, it's not insignificant. That's a, that is what business leaders keep, that's what keeps them up at night. That's what they lie awake wondering, how do I make my company more, more specific or more, more productive and better prepared for, you know, this, this wave of mobility that is upon us. So what do you do now? How do we take it to the, to, the, to the next step? If you're interested, before we do the Q&A, you can visit uh, www.getlua.com. Sadly, we will never have the lua.com um, web URL simply because Lua is also a programming language. So uh, we like our somewhat cheeky getlua.com. Feel free to visit that. You can pop us an email. You can also talk to your local Citrix team. If you are a current Citrix client, 
which probably the majority of you are, if not everybody, feel free to engage them. We are in the App Store, we are Citrix Ready certified. We work with Citrix in the field all around the world. So do not hesitate to reach out, hesitate to reach out to them as well and, and let them know that you're interested in learning more about how Lua can work inside and outside, of course, of Zen Mobile itself. Okay, so to that end, we I believe are at the the QA slide, which is there is no slide, it's just something we're gonna do. So we have a bunch of questions that are that have been asked, and I want to make sure that I get to them. Bear with me for a second. Okay, let me grab this first one. Okay, so that's a great question. This is coming from the United States. So the question is, uh, while messaging is, is ubiquitous and it's incredibly simple and basic, which is why we use it, it's quick, how does an organization convince its people to move off consumer messaging apps and onto Lua? So that's a great question. It is like jamming an elephant through a mouse hole to try to get everybody to do every uh, to do one thing all at the same time. So similar to Citrix or really any well functioning solution, you want to do it in a, in a staged approach. You want to understand who the um, you know what the use case is. You want to understand it, how to design an architect to it, and you want to roll it out um, in, a, in a fashion that can be adopted by the enterprise. So you start with a smaller group, you do a phase one, and then you move into a phase two and phase three. We have at Lua, and this is not a marketing um, stat. This is this is the truth. My hand on a Bible. We have less than ha we have had had less than one percent churn since we started the company, and that's simply because that client no longer was in business. And there's a reason for that. It's because a product like this is so easy to use. It's in some ways it becomes fun to use, and it becomes very sticky. So when a division starts utilizing Lua, then other they want to be able to communicate with other divisions, and then everybody wants to be able to communicate with the, with everybody. So you start to see that growth virally. But obviously, at the end of the day, it needs to be a top-down push. It needs to be the, the business leaders, the application owners, the IT department. They're always involved in these types of uh, rollouts. So we that's why we work with our Citrix partners to also make sure that it, that design and architecture is done correctly. But it's also not a comprehensive or intrusive matter. This happens. This is something we do every day. And it's, it's actually pretty quick to roll something like this out. It's, we're talking minutes and hours not days and weeks, which is what the traditional enterprise is used to. And frankly, that's the difference between you know, the mobile world of today and the client server and web-based stuff from the last 15 years. And I don't, I don't see that changing anytime soon. Um, another question, do, does it work outside of Zen Mobile? It does. We didn't talk a whole lot about that. Uh, we work within Zen Mobile, but yeah, we do work outside of Zen Mobile. For some, so for some enterprises, they don't necessarily have to have um, a, a an MAM EMM solution baked onto every phone, uh, and yeah, so we are able to be used natively on the device outside of Zen Mobile. Uh, let me see the next question here. What are the top industries using Lua? Great question. We, we we touched on this a little bit, so I might have answered this a little bit earlier. Um, but if you go back to actually, I'll try to go back to that slide. It is uh, this is a bit of a a mutual fund of verticals and sectors, I think what you see is really two things. Companies that are ahead of the game in understanding what the world of mobility can offer. In uh, the second piece is those that are way more concerned about their data, the data integrity, and then the productivity piece. So that tends to be regulated industries, companies that are public, companies that have to deal with this state, local, federal, um, IT compliance laws and don't want to be caught uh, you know, proverbially with their hand in the cookie jar going outside of that. And those are the ones that you see that. So, so of course, healthcare, of course, large companies that have distributed workforce, um, whether it's transportation, whether it's uh, service industry, and that could be airlines, that could be, um, uh, I said transportation and logistics, but whether you're talking about manufacturing and you're talking about law firms that have hundreds and hundreds, sometimes thousands of people with remote offices and moving left and right, and they want to make sure that data is secure and that they can act, access that data. And that, that is a real big piece of it, is the inability to get to the data that they want, and you can do that via Lua. So it's uh, it's definitely cross-vertical, and I think this illustrates that, but certainly some of the ones I identified are probably the, the more early adopters. There's always the early adopters versus the guys that wait a little while. Uh, but I think what we've seen also 
also the I believe the analysts are backing that up is that it's suddenly moving very quickly and I think that's just mobility in general. Is it how easy is it to deploy Lua inside of Zen Mobile? It's actually very easy. So um, it, the integration is all done. It has been done for months. We have clients utilizing it. You simply go to the store and you can pull it down and, and away you go. So there's there's really not a whole, not a whole heck of a lot you have to do. We did the we did the work with the the Citrix Works team and the Citrix Ready team months and months ago so that you guys can just pull it down uh, and utilize it inside of it and, and enjoy the experience. Let me ask if there's any more. Well, there's a few more, but I know we're probably running out of time. Okay, yep, yeah. so why don't we hold it there. So it, with that, that said, I want to say again a warm and grateful thank you to Kaylee, who dialed in from Citrix UK and taking her time out of her schedule for that. Kaylee, thank you very much. Yeah, and absolutely. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, no worries. Uh, and again, if you would like to continue this conversation, and we certainly would like to, even if you just want to learn more, I mean, we're not, there's no requirements, but if you'd like to just understand what we do and how we do it and who we're doing it for, please do not hesitate to reach out at sales at GetLua. Uh, again, you could also reach out if you're having conversations with your local Citrix team, feel free to, to ping them as well. Uh, but that said, that this is the end of the webinar. Again, my name is Brian Feller, and I'm the Vice President of Corporate Development here at Lua. And I wish everybody uh, a great day and a tremendous week and have a great end of summer.